YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host TKK and we are back with another video, guys. Good to see you. This is the start of the week for us. Um, it is Tuesday, so we missed the Monday upload for arcade content, but going forward, you can expect to see arcade content on Mondays and then following the rest of the week with just random content. Now, guys, before I get into the topic of today's video, I want to ask you guys if you have any kind of an opinion about me picking one day in specific, one day out of the week to do live streams. Any day outside of Monday and outside of Sunday. Sunday's a day I'd like to have no content on the channel and then Monday's a day for arcade stuff specifically. So again, if you have any opinion, leave it in the comments section. I really wanna use your feedback to get a live stream consistency schedule going on the channel. Guys, I wanna to talk to you guys today about the Sony 2023 alpha 95 love that's a 95 love the a 95 l following up from the a 95 k last year quantum.oled along with a couple of different other brands not going to have hdmi 2.1 for all four ports it's very disappointing and uh i want to talk to you guys about that right after this intro All right, so I want to kick this thing off just being transparent with you guys. Um, I've been doing as best that I can to shoot this content in chronological order. Like my vision for my channel is for it to just all make sense for you to be able to just binge watch it and just to be able to say, OK, he went from here to here to here to here to here to here. So, uh, so far, things are lining up like flawlessly in the way that I would think that you would watch my content, especially for the TV stuff for you to be able to just kind of follow everything, right? So we've got the Alpha 95 King or the A95K uh, from last year. That was a Quantum Dot OLED from Sony. Came out in 55 and 65 class. I got it in 65. I absolutely love the TV and I have enjoyed the TV ever since I've gotten it. Um, right now it's in the main living space. I'm getting ready to change things. So if you followed the channel last week, you see that I brought the 77 inch C1 from 2021 back into the fold to kind of give you a brief review on it. We talked about some image retention and it's going to be coming into this room because the A95K is going to be going back into my bedroom, which is going to leave for me getting the A95L. That's going to be the 2023 Quantum Dot from Sony. Samsung does also have an option coming too. I am planning on getting Sony's iteration of the Quantum Dot OLED this year in 77. So in my living space, because this is my home, I'm not moving, I'm not going anywhere. Um, the 77 inch is adequate. It's like a big enough size for me. Again, I've covered this content. It's in chronological order. And I kind of spoke as to how the C1 was my first uh, TV that I got larger than a 65 inch. Right. And I love the size of that. Like, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, what I ended up doing was adjusting my seating for the A95K, which, again, I have in 65 to mesh well with the distance that I have, because in the seating arrangement that I had, the C1 in when it was in this room, that TV isn't large enough, basically, is what I'm saying. So we're going to get things full circle. So anyway, Vincent on his channel last night, which is HD TV test, he made some great content as he always does. I'm a student to his channel. I do like to look for his channel for some bleeding edge stuff. Um, he seems to be in a position where he can kind of get his hands on information uh, sooner than a lot of us other guys can. Right. In any event, uh, after watching his video, I said I thought on it for a little bit and I was like, you know what? The perspective in which I want to deliver my video talking about that essentially is going to be to explain to you guys how this may not be such a bad thing. OK, so again, right now I'm sitting with the A95K in my living space. I've made content I'll card in right now in regards to a receiver or what you should be considering if you got one of these TVs. And it seems to be the same thing. So nothing has changed in that regard. OK. There is a slew of TVs. In fact, the number one, number two, from a picture quality perspective from professional analysts, you know, being the A95K and then your Panasonic or, yeah, I think it was the Panasonic OLED they have from that shootout. Those are going to be some of the best cinema reference panels that you could got last year. Neither of them have more than two HDMI 2.1 ports. And that seems to be the same thing here. Now, LG, Samsung, apparently they make their own chipsets and you know, these TVs always have four. And listen, I'm with you guys. I'm a customer and a consumer just like you. I prefer my TV to have more, but it doesn't turn out to be a, such a bad thing when you really think about it. So as I'm sitting here, 
I've got gaming PC, which is an RTX 4090 graphics card. I've got PlayStation 5. I got Xbox Series X. These are the three peripherals that I have that could utilize HDMI 2.1. Two of these devices I actually have connected to my receiver, which is a Denon receiver. It's a 2022 model. Um, that receiver does have variable refresh uh, VRR pass through. It also does have HDMI 2.1s in and out, right? So I'm not really missing anything from that perspective. Personally, I like to not run consoles and gaming uh, devices through receivers because it's just another lane that you have to pass through, right? So you have to factor in whatever the input latency out is going to be coming to the TV. And the Sony brand doesn't, it already doesn't have like the absolute lowest. Although the latency is really damn good, it doesn't have the lowest latency. So that's just something you got to be conscious of. However, the RTX 4090 PC is running directly to the TV. So I'm getting everything that I should be getting out of it. And I'm happy with that. You know, I think the biggest thing is going to come by way to, you know, you asking yourself, if you're going to go Sony, if you're going to go TCL, if you're going to go uh, Panasonic, Philips, or any of these other companies that are going to be using this media chip, you know, do you need to have all of these connected? And by the way, TCL definitely gets kudos for being innovators. Um, the fact that they were able to run their eARC to one of the 2.0 ports is phenomenal because if you're like me prior to this configuration that I had, all I needed was just audio to be ran to the receiver. So the eARC doesn't need to do more than just give me the sound pass through is basically what I needed. And, and a lot of you guys might be in a similar situation where you might have soundbar configurations. So having that one port, that two port, or that three port, four port, whichever configuration uh, set open for you to have 2.1 ports is really good. I do really hope that Sony can maybe carbon copy that thought process because your gamers will really like to have the option of having two ports available for them to be able to have both consoles or PC and console, because really that's the big combination. Which console you're gonna have for those exclusives? Pretty much PlayStation and then a gaming PC, or if you just straight console, you want the Xbox, you want the PlayStation. Having two ports available is definitely nice. Not a deal breaker though. If you get yourself a home theater receiver that can pass through, you know, everything that you need, the variable refresh rate, the, 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 the low latency and everything else, I digress. My point is, what I'm just trying to say to you is that you really have to be meticulous in planning out your setup. Now, I do think it's very disappointing, and it's going to be another talking point when the videos come down. <clears throat> you know, when there's reviews coming out, there's going to be, oh, well, why buy the Sony because it has this? You know, again, there's like a whole list of different manufacturers that unfortunately are going to be using this chipset. Now, for me, I have to question Sony, and I'm an unbiased guy. I am going to get the 75, the 77 quantum dot from them because I absolutely love the picture quality. And at this point, I don't want to go with anything that could be less thereof. But why aren't they making their own chip? I have no idea. At this point, they're not making the panel. They're not making that chip set. It's just like, you know, this is what's frustrating to me. Right. So when you start thinking about why their TVs cost so much, could this possibly be a part of it? Is it because I've got to pay Samsung for this or LG for this or this company for this or this company for that or Google for this OS? Like, I don't know. You know, I really wish that the engineers and listen, I don't know enough to really speak fluently about, you know, what entails into making a TV and making an operating system. But I do really admire and enjoy what LG and what Samsung are bringing to the table now to kind of pit these companies against each other. In a perfect world for me, I would be able to have LG's base, like with the quantum, with Samsung's display, with Sony's processing. Like, so essentially give me WebOS with that game optimization, give me Sony's processing, you know, give me um, Samsung's now display. But if that was tweaked to have a larger size, like what LGs can do. Hopefully someday Samsung will get into the market of making 83 inch quantum dot OLEDs because if that were a thing, that would definitely would have been something I would have been trying to target at. Um, but unfortunately we're not living in a perfect world. And so ultimately you have to make yourself, you know, settle for one thing or the next, right? This is great news though for a lot of people because now you can really sit back and just really think about like what's most going to be important for you. For me, I can tell you that picture size is important for me and picture quality is important right so i'm going back to a 77 inch which is going to be the c1 
we're going to be completely like taking this room apart and making it more back into a living room because I got some extra space in my home freed up so that I can get kind of like my own man cave back instead of like having the living room being a man cave. I digress. I'm going to be putting up larger TV that is good in quality. This is the C1 we're talking about. But again, I've grown accustomed already to the A95K. It's just a whole entire different level in terms of not even brightness. Like I don't understand what the hang up of brightness is, but it's just it's just picture quality, man. Just the, the potential of what you can do if you know how to tweak your TV to your settings. So I'm going to go back to seeing the C1. And then when I go to bed, I'm going to be seeing the A95K. And then I'm going to be hoping for the future when I can get that picture quality back in that size down here. So that's what I'm going to be going for. I'm not going to be that focused on like a ton of HDMI 2.1 ports because I'm going to be streaming content on Plex. And I'm probably just going to have my PlayStation 5 connected down to the 77A95L once all things are set up. Now, guys, I'm also going to be looking into buying LG's uh, premium TV this year, as well as one of Samsung's also. It's going to be the Quantum Dot S95C. As soon as I can conf confirm 100% that that thing is going to be in 55 class, that's what I'm going to be going for. I'm excited to see what that one connect box configuration looks like and how sleek it mounts on the wall. I'm currently getting my room set up so that I can have that and the G3 side by side. So the G3 is definitely what I'm going to be going for. Um, and so I'm excited to be able to try all three of those displays. Those are going to be my three panels for the year. I want to know what yours is going to be if you're interested in anything or what your thoughts are about this whole media tech or chip set, set situation where Sony and Panasonic and these other guys are not going to, you know, really have more than 2.1, two 2.1 ports. And the way it was articulated was like how now these companies can list that the stuff is four ports when it's really not. It's, 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 it's brutal, man. It's brutal. You just got to be on point with your game. But like I said, TCO gets my, uh, my respects for being innovative and figuring out a way to give their consumers two of those ports while pushing the ERG down to the, to the third or fourth port. Let me know what you guys think. If you got any suggestions, again, I want to know what your thoughts are about if you think I should be doing a live stream once a week, what day, what time. Would you like to see that? If if that was something that uh, I could do based off what your recommendations are, leave that in the comments. If you got any discussion to bring to this uh, topic, leave it down there. If you like the video, thumb up. If you ain't subscribed, consider doing it. I'm going to catch you guys on the next video. Peace, God bless, and as always say, max love.